So let's make a start on the piston. Usual story, face the end off. Touch off. Give it a couple of scratches. And there we go. Could do with a little 45 on there. Only a small one. Half a mil, something like that. The next step is going to be to put a groove in the OD for the O-ring. Let's just get some of this crap from underneath the tool post. So, where's my little handle? I'm simply going to use a parting tool for this and square it up nice and square. Let's have a look against the chuck. Miles out. That looks better. And I'm going to have the back face of the circuit groove five millimeters back from the front face. Round figures. So if I just touch on the front, give myself some zeros, come back. Five mil? Yeah. I'll just lock my carriage off in that position. Uh, that part it all looks a little low. Got my old tool post up in here so i'll just raise that tool up a touch it looks low to me okay so i'm gonna put a little groove in first As you can see, I'm putting a groove in with a parting tool. I've got a little O-ring here. Now this is 3.8 shaft. And the bore of this is around O-ring I found. Nice thick O-ring. And it's about 7 mil inside, so... Let's just try it on there. Now as you can see, that's probably half an O-ring into the groove um, and there's absolutely no way that's going to go in there so dig a little bit deeper I'm going to go point one at a time and see how we get on in fact set my DRO on zero I went point two that time let's have a look at this still sticking out a mile and a bit and as you can see there's no way it's going to go in so another point one aside now I'm just creeping up on this again I'll go point one five because I know I'm miles away oops Well, we're getting better but there's still absolutely no chance I can tell yeah it's going to push the o-ring out of the groove before it even thinks about it even though I've got a bit of a chamfer there okay so more touch off that's another point one five aside of course the luxury with this and with it being close to the end, as if I do go too deep, 
Luckily, my parting tool is the same, would put a wide enough groove in for the uh, O-ring. But if I do go too deep, I can just part it off and try it again. So a bit of trial and error. But I've got an inch more material on here than I need. Or 25 mil. That's, it's getting there. I can, I can tell at a glance that's no good. It's getting more difficult to get out. So it is sinking down in the groove now. So that was 0.15 on the DRO. Another bit more. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's just try that. Still deeper. You can sort of push the O ring one way, which you don't catch your fingers on the parting tool. But you can push the O ring one way and then uh, just pop it back out of the groove. You don't need any picks or anything. Okay, we should be getting down to the nitty gritty now. Alright, that's sitting in there. Obviously I've picked a small O-ring because I want it when it's right down in the groove. In fact, I may need a smaller O-ring. Obviously you want it to measure sort of 10 mil on the OD, which this one did. Or did it. Let me just double check that. I may have to pick a smaller o-ring I could have sworn I picked one that was 10 mil on the OD yeah with the hole being 9.7 we should be okay as long as we're not too loose yeah and a bit more that pretty flush I think I might have stretched it a bit we'll see that's very close to going in put a bit of oil on it no before I dig it any deeper, let's just try a smaller O-ring in there. So we had a change of plan. I've now got an O-ring that's 9mm on the outside. And I've recut a new groove. <laughs> I said if you mess it up, you can just move along. Well, that's exactly what I did. So I can see that it's sticking up above the surface. And it won't quite go in. I may put a slightly larger chamfer on the end of the uh, in the end of the cylinder just to give it a bit of a help. But again, I've been creeping up on it. Still above the outside. Nope. So the object is we want to get it to be able to fit in there easily as you would do it if you were in the field so to speak. Um, but we still want it tight enough to get the compression. I think I'm going to go another point one aside. I think we should be pretty much on the money here. If I can get it in the groove. There we go. That's getting pretty damn close. But it does go in. Again, a bit of oil on it maybe. I think 
improve that chamfer in the end of there a little. I'm worried about it pinching and shaving the rubber off. I don't know. We'll try it. We'll take it all apart and try it. So I put the body back up and just uh, smoothed off a little radius in the front edge. Let's show you here. Um, it was a Champa 45 and I've just dressed a little radius in there just to give the O-ring a fighting chance of entry. Um, I tried to put it in and I could actually see a little piece of the rubber O-ring shave off the outside so uh, hence why I put a radius in there just stop it doing that in the future i changed the o-ring um put a bit of oil around the place and as you can see it enters and if i push it in it actually comes back out again with the pressure with the compression so so far so good yeah happy with that so that's the o-ring fit and the end chamfered and faced. Now I need to put a pocket in the end to put my combustion material in. So we'll do that next. So for the pocket, all I need is a PS3 centre drill. Let's get it started and I'm gonna go in five millimeters. One, two, three, four, five. Let's have a look at that. Now, might go in a bit more, call it six. Six millimeters. I think, maybe another half mil. Well, it's six and a half. So I'll give you a shot of the end of it. So there's the end, drilled out with a BS3 set to drill, and I've gone six and a half mil deep. And that's given me a pocket, probably, I don't know, seven mil diameter on the outside of the taper, and obviously the pocket. Now, our char cloth will be put in here ready for combustion. So I've taken the O ring off the end, which allows me to push the piston right up hard against the back. I've marked the shaft of the piston with a bit of sharpie and I'm just going to use a very sharp scriber and scribe myself a line as you can see here at the length where it will be full depth. So my next trick part it off or hacksaw it off and machine it to that line. going to leave it on the long side of that line rather than removing the line altogether because I want this piston to bottom out against the cylinder head but when it's fully inserted I want it just to be sticking out just a hair so that should be where I want to be I can just see the edge of the line so, we don't like sharp edges, the tiniest of 45's on the end of there, and this will get rid of the line, but the overall length, here we are, again perhaps half a mil chamfer, but it means it's not sharp. So my next trick is going to be to drill a pocket down inside the piston, let's say uh, what is it, 10 mil diameter near enough? Let's say 6 mil diameter, perhaps 40 mil deep, something like that, 50 mil deep. So that's the next crack. 6 mil diameter, 
50 mil deep. So let's just uh, center drill it first. I've still got my center drill here. Drill chuck. Just get the black centre drill. Drill chuck, where are you? Where are you? Come on. Let's just have a six mil drill quickly. Oops. And we're going to drill a hole, 6 mil diameter, 50 mil deep. Nothing special, it's just a 6 mil hole with a 6 mil drill. I'll bring you back on the next step. So we've done the 6 mil diameter, 50 mil deep. I've now got a 6.8, tap and drill for 8 mil. And I'm going to do this 15 mil deep. and then tap it in eight. As you see, I've taken my lathe tool out of the way so I don't catch my hand and I can just basically hand tap this need to be at least 10 millimeters deep doesn't look that deep to me I'll bring it back when we're done so that's it tapped M8 course to a depth of probably 10 12 mil something like that and it's drilled out six mil down the bore of the cylinder 50 mil deep and that's going to give me a little storage compartment to keep my dry tinder. So I've virtually completed now the um, this thing. In fact, it is completed. I just gave it a little polish up off camera. We need to make the piston handle. So it's going to fit into there, into that M8. There's just a plain M8 thread on this one. So, and uh, we're going to make this red 10 mil long. So we'll just place this off. Get rid of the, uh, what's it? I got a bit of a shumper on the top of there. That can stay there because I'm going to machine it off. Give myself a zero there. And uh, machine it back. Bit back, there we are. I'm doing about 10 mil. I'll stop at 9.5. I'm going to take this down like a dead weight mill. You can see I'm taking about 3 mil aside off this. Just that feeding it. a quick measure of that. I'm only going to run a die down it so it doesn't need to be hyper accurate. Nine mil. Okay, another half mil aside. Okay. 
you if I film with the 10. A little undercut in the bottom of the thread. There we go. Oh, wrong handle. <laughs> and I'll put it again, as per usual. 45 degree shunt on the end. And a little 45 tool. Just to give the die an easy life. More like a 60 on the end. And the 45 on top of here. While I'm at it. I think I'll machine the OD. All in one hit. I think I took 0.15 off the other one from touch. There's touch. 0.1 aside. I'll use a B for this. It's going to be 15 mil wide, so I'm just skimming the OD. Give it a 20 mil back, no, no worries for that. And that's that dead. So I'll be the winding handle and winding M8 thread on the end of it. So again, using my tailstock die holder, just apply a little pressure with the uh, with the tailstock. Would help me do up the clamp. And off she goes. Back it off a bit. I've got an undercut in this one so I can go right to the face. And there we are, quick and as simple as that. The M8 threads on the end of it. Give you a close up of that. If it'll focus, and there we have it. So I've just done a bit of jiggering about, put a slightly larger taper on the end of there, increased the width of the undercut, and I've had to run a plug tap down into the cylinder, because uh, the taper tap that I tapped it with wasn't deep enough. Anyway, it screws right up to the end, tight. You don't want to do this up tight, tight, because you want to be able to access the compartment inside. So that's the handle, fits in there. So next, chop it off 15 mil. So again, I took it out, axed it off. And we'll just machine its length to a nominal 15 mil. witness mark on here at 16 mil so right extra mil from there will be my 15 speed it up a bit a little finishing cut and that's 15 mil long. As per usual, can you guess what comes next? Yeah, 45 degrees on the end. Oh, can I get in there? Ooh, tell you what, let's just pull it out in the chuck a bit. How's that look? Look good. Bringing this into shot, gonna match up the uh, 
the size, so they look the same both ends. So it's funny like that. <laughs> okay, so that's the handle. I'll just pop it out of there. Machined up, 15 mil thick, M8 on the end, good undercut, 10 mil long, and it screws into the piston. Got a couple of little marks on there where it spun in the jaws while I was tapping it. I just need to polish that. It'll be um, the polish. I won't polish it with emery cloth. I don't want to reduce the size or anything. I'll just use a bit of um, scotch Brite, my favourite scotch Brite. So, there ooh, are the component parts of the fire piston. Now then, that's the basic manufacture and it would work like that. But obviously we're going to need some char cloth and we'll go through making char cloth. And I'm actually going to pretty it up a bit because the action is going to be, let me just bring you out a shot a bit. Because the action during use is going to be to put your little piece of char cloth in there, just get it started and basically whack that down there like that it should then ignite the char cloth now my thinking is to have a grip up on here so that sounded a lot louder than, than it actually was and as you can see when i get to the very bottom there i can hardly compress that bit there's that much compression compression in there but it will it will work i'm sure That does get tight down to the bottom, so it just goes to show there's a great deal of compression. When I get... Oh, I can push it down as it leaks past the seal, but it is uh, very tight indeed. Okay. So. Pretty it up a bit. And then what we're going to do. Yeah. Then the next step. Obviously, I'm going to get some cord and what have you. And we're going to make some char cloth. So, I think we've got enough content for this episode three. Episode four is going to be putting some nice grooves in here, perhaps, you know, to make it like a handle. Um, and making char cloth. <laughs>